Hi guys, welcome back to another First Friday Fives. I know I'm a day late, and yes, I checked, my wallet is indeed a dollar short. But it's been a long and busy week, and my reward was coming down with a cold which has made me a tad grouchy due to the sore throat. So I'll apologize ahead of time that I might be a little out of it, and my voice might be a little scratchy. This month I wanted to help out those considering getting a big bore revolver by doing a countdown of the top five big bore revolver manufacturers. To clarify, this is about the firearms that are produced by manufacturers, so small shop customs are not included. These are revolvers you could walk into your local FFL and buy or order. And with that, let's get started before my voice gives out entirely. Number 5. Taurus while not providing as many chamberings as some others, Taurus does provide some big ones and even has provided further options in the past, meaning the used revolver market can make things even more interesting. The two most well-known series of revolvers they offer are the Tracker series, which is chambered in 44 Magnum, and the Raging series, with the chambering options offered in 44 Magnum and the infamous 454 Casul, known as the Raging Bull, which comes in a five shot. This is one of only two double-action revolvers chambered in 454 Casul on the market as of the time this video is being made. And unlike its competition, it comes ported to reduce the pain on the shooter's hands. And if you're willing to buy a used Raging Bull, it was chambered in both 480 Ruger and 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum at one point. There is some word roaming the net regarding the reliability or quality of Taurus's firearms, but I can't comment either way as I have never owned one of their revolvers. I will say that my father has one of their Beretta Base 92 models, and after 20 plus years, it still shoots reliably and has impressive accuracy. But this is about wheel guns, so it's time to move on. Number 4. Magnum Research Incorporated Magnum Research Incorporated, hereafter referred to as MRI, decided to start making revolvers in 1999 and released a 4570 chambered single action revolver known as the BFR which at the time meant biggest fu uh, <clears throat> wait uh, I meant biggest finest revolver right later on they would rename the BFR to stand for big frame revolver which is 100% on the nose with the longer cylinder it's a behemoth however as time has gone on they have added a shorter cylinder model and, where the Taurus may have had more models, MRI gave the BFR more caliber choices including 44 Magnum, 454 Casul, 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum, 475 Linebaugh, 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, and the sole manufacturer to chamber a gun in 500 JRH. Ruger! What the f***? <laughs> Get with the program, guys! Come on! Oh, but it doesn't stop there with the BFR. Want rifle calibers? Like, say, 3030 Winchester, 444 Marlin, 450 Marlin, or 4570, like we mentioned earlier? They've got you covered. Still not enough? Well, you can call their custom shop, and for the right price, they offer 45 ACP, 45 Colt, 445 Super Mag, 475 Wildy Magnum, 450 Bushmaster, 4590 Winchester, 458 Socomb, 499 LWR, what the, 50 GI, 50 AE, and even 50 Beowulf, not to mention several non-big bore calibers like 300 Blackout. Yeah, you heard that right, 300 Blackout. Not to mention, you can get some custom shops to alter them for other calibers like the JRH Advanced Gunsmithing Built 50 Alaskan version owned by author Max Brazek which got away from him and the front sight connected with his skull. <laughs> How's your head feeling there, Max? Man, I bet that hurt. But the best part is the stock ones are at a price much less expensive than custom shop-built models and are very well built. Good dollar-to-value ratio there, but it is a one-model run and single action only, so number four it is. Number three, Freedom Arms. This company was formed in 1979 by Wayne Baker and Dick Casul with the hope of bringing Dick Casul's big bore badass cartridge to the world and out of Wildcat status. And in 1983, they released the Model 83 single action revolver chambered in the now well known 454 Casul caliber. For the first time ever, you could buy a handgun capable of hunting the largest game on earth without going to a custom gunsmith. 
and the mighty 44 Magnum was officially dethroned as the most powerful handgun in the world, a title it had held since 1956. And that's not the only claim to fame that Freedom Arms has. If MRI makes great revolvers for the masses at a price that's within reach, Freedom Arms makes the finest revolvers of any major manufacturer bar none. They are all made one at a time by hand. They even take the time to line bore the cylinders to increase accuracy. This means that the cylinders are bored while in the frame through the barrel mounting area on the frame to ensure perfect alignment. Unless you have a custom shop do this for you, you will not buy a revolver with this kind of attention to detail. As time has gone on, they also added another single action, the Model 97, and other big bore calibers, such as 41 Magnum, 44 Special, 44 Magnum, 45 Colt, 454 Casul, 475 Linebaugh, and their own 50 caliber creation, the 500 Wyoming Express. The last was created so they could have a 50 caliber cartridge that fit their cylinders. Again, Ruger, why are you the last one to the party here? The downside of these revolvers is the price they command. Expect to spend well over 2,000 US dollars for a new one, and the used ones aren't cheap either. Custom shop prices are what keep Freedom Arms from moving these beautifully crafted revolvers up the list. Now before we get to the runner-up and the winner, I want to stress two things. First, please remember that this is just our opinion and is in no way any kind of authority on the subject. Opinion is what it is. And secondly, if you disagree, please comment below and try to keep it respectful. We're interested in hearing counterpoints, but let's keep it civil. Number two, Smith & Wesson. Oh dear God, I can already feel the Smith & Wesson faithful writing the nasty comments as they lose their minds, but hear me out. You'd be hard pressed to find a revolver manufacturer today that knows revolver building better than Smith & Wesson. In business since 1852, this is a company that has pushed the boundaries of wheel gun making and never shied away from the new calibers and new innovations. They were the first to chamber the 357 Magnum with their Model 27 and the first to chamber the 44 Magnum in 1956 with their Model 29. <sighs> that gun looks so good on you, Detective Callahan. This meant they made the most powerful production handgun in the world, a title they carried for 27 years until the Freedom Arms Model 83 took the title away in 1983. But Smith & Wesson reclaimed that title 20 years later when they released their Model 500 built on their new X-Frame in the newly released 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum in 2003. And to ensure being top dog, in 2005 they released another X-Frame revolver, the 460 XVR, chambered in their new 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. The XVR stood for Extreme Velocity Revolver. It is currently the revolver that shoots a projectile with the fastest velocity in the world, by shooting a 200 grain bullet in excess of 2300 feet per second. They also offer many options for the big bore fan, like 41 Magnum, oh god, I lust for the Model 57, 44 Magnum, 45 ACP, 45 Colt, 460 Smith & Wesson, and the King of the Hill, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. So why didn't they get the number one spot on this list? Well, there's two reasons. First, they have had a reputation for not being as strong as our number one manufacturer. Although I would argue they are no less reliable and often have better refinement straight out of the box. But they can be pushed too hard, and when that happens, it's not pretty. And no big bore enthusiast has uh, ever pushed the limits, am I right? <laughs> Secondly, due to the lack of strength, having them modified to Wildcat cartridges is not as easy, and most custom shops just won't do it. So you're stuck with what you get from the factory. MRI, Freedom Arms, and our number one manufacturer all are known for being rebuilt and rechambered for tough calibers and hunting expeditions. I'd argue that there are excellent factory choices from Smith & Wesson for these desires, but it is a limitation that cost it the number one spot by a thin slice. Number one. Drum roll, please. Ruger. Okay, start the hate email now. Okay, I'll admit that I am biased here, but I do have my reasons. So let's talk about why, though very narrowly, Ruger is the top pick on this list. Founded in 1949, 
Ruger started by building 22 caliber handguns, and yet here they are on the top of a big bore list. They were the third manufacturer to chamber the 44 Magnum in a revolver, their Blackhawk, in 1956. Smith was the first, and Great Western Arms, now defunct, was the second. This was the beginning of what would become a long history of big bore production. They made their first big bore double action, the Red Hawk, in 1980, and released their Super Red Hawk in 1987, both in 44 Magnum. These double actions can eat up round after round of heavy 44 Magnum that no Smith & Wesson could live to tell the tale of. And in 1999, Ruger released the 454 Casul Super Red Hawk. They were the first and still the only manufacturer to ever create a six-shot 454 Casul in any revolver. That should say something about the strength that they have. In 2001, they released the Super Red Hawk in their first ever Ruger cartridge, the 480 Ruger. They have also chambered their revolvers in 41 Magnum, 44 Special, 45 ACP, and 45 Colt. So they offer some versatility. Although, nothing in a 50 caliber. Come on guys, I'm begging you here. Begging! But where Ruger truly reigns supreme as the top dog is that they are strong enough to have custom revolver makers tear them apart, rebore, and rebuild them in calibers that are truly powerful and that not many other manufacturers can even step up to the plate to utilize. Some examples are the 475 Line Ball, the 500 Line Ball, the 50 Action Express, and even having 5-shot 45 Colt cylinders added so you can literally squeeze every last ounce of performance out of it, nearly ending up at a 454 Casul territory. And with the short-lived 357 Maximum Blackhawk frame out there, this has allowed John Linebaugh to produce even more powerful versions of his cartridges, i.e. the 475 and 500 Maximums. There are numerous other palm-bruising, big-game felling Wildcat cartridges out there that Ruger revolvers, both double and single action alike, can be modified to utilize. And if you want to stick with the factory product, the 454 Casul and 480 Ruger offerings are powerful enough for any hunting trip anywhere on Earth. While not as powerful as the Smith & Wesson calibers, they are powerful enough and will have less noise and recoil to contend with. And with the smaller size and reduced weight when compared to the X-frames, they are easier to carry and to handle. So for these reasons, Ruger gets a narrow win. So counting back for you, number five, Taurus with the Tracker and the Raging Bull. Number four, Magnum Research with more caliber options than Colt has bankruptcies. Number three, Freedom Arms and the most exquisite single actions out there today. Number two, Smith & Wesson. Lots of options, great craftsmanship, and the most powerful handgun in the world. And number one, Ruger. The strongest guns eating the hottest ammo, great practical big bore caliber options, and the versatility to be modified into pretty much any caliber you could ever imagine. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the list. Let us know what you think below, and please click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of what we have to offer. And as always, go big bore, or go home.